Then I heard a voice saying, You're dead. I don't know how, but I knew everything. I was saying, Guys, help me. I'm going to hell. I'm going to die. Call a pastor. Call my parents. I'm going to die. I'm going to hell. I was screaming, Jesus, but I couldn't feel the presence of God. I was screaming, Forgiveness, forgiveness, but it was useless. It felt like time stood still, an eternity of suffering. And finally, I found myself in hell. When I say hell, it's not a metaphor, it's something real. The word pain cannot describe what I felt. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to share a real-life testimony of life change in Christ. If you have a life story and would like to share it, we want to hear from you. We are always looking for testimonies that can touch and motivate everyone's lives. If you have a testimony in Christ that you would like to be read here on the channel, contact us through the comments to send us your story. We can't wait to hear your amazing stories and share them with our community. Thank you for being part of our family. Now, let's get to today's testimony. My name is John, and I am 29 years old. I'm going to share my testimony. I grew up in the church. My parents have been serving since I was a baby. But over time, I fell into a routine and got bored. To me, church and everything related to God was boring. I sought fun in the world, in parties, drinking, and fighting. I was a very violent guy. I liked to fight, to hit, and to get hit. I was involved in gangs, loved money, and would do anything to get more, legally or illegally. I did a lot of stupid things. Now I'm going to tell you how God transformed my life. I was on vacation with friends. We had rented an apartment at the beach for a month. One night we went out and I got involved in another fight. I returned to the apartment proud, happy with my victory. I was exhausted and went to sleep. There were 10 of us in the apartment divided into different rooms. I shared a room with two friends. I was the first to go to sleep. Then my friends arrived. One of them liked to listen to music to fall asleep, and that night he played a very soft song, but it wasn't Christian music. Normally I would have liked the music, but at that moment while I was sleeping, I began to feel pain and tremble in bed. It felt as if the music was burning me. My friend didn't understand what was happening and laughed it off, not taking it seriously. I asked him to turn off the music, but he only lowered the volume. I tried to move, but the music seemed to pierce my body, a burning sensation. I continued to tremble and shout, Turn off the music, please. Something strange is happening. Then I heard a voice saying, You're dead. I panicked, got up, started dressing, and said I needed to get out of there. I was in pain, feeling terrible, and didn't understand what was happening. I asked my friends, one Christian and the other Muslim, to pray for me because I didn't know what was going on. A pastor called my parents, but they prayed for me. Then, the Christian friend who had played the music didn't pay much attention. My Muslim friend began to pray fervently in Arabic. And now, I heard the same voice that said I was dead, mocking my friend and saying, Unconscious fool, you're praying to the wrong person. At that moment, I truly panicked. I approached my friend and said, Stop, brother, stop. He thought I was joking and began to speak even louder. Then something really strange happened. I saw myself floating, seeing myself twice as if I was outside my body. At that moment, I became completely hysterical. I started to scream and tried to run after myself, but it was impossible. I was screaming and trying to reach myself, but it was futile. During this state, I was aware of my entire life. I don't know how, but I knew everything. I was saying, guys, help me. I'm going to hell, I'm going to die. Call a pastor, call my parents. I'm going to die, I'm going to hell. My friends tried to hold me, but I knocked everything down in the apartment. I was screaming, hold me, hold me. They said, we're trying, what's happening? I answered, it's too late, it's over for me, I'm going to hell. I felt my friends holding me less and less as I continued to sink, feeling cold and darkness around me. The voice that mocked me said, I warned you, you're dead. There was no point in fighting. I saw a series of bad things I had done in life and each time the voice would say, See? Do you see? I was aware of everything. The good, the bad, heaven, hell. I knew all of it was real. 
Then, I started to hear the word speaker repeatedly. I saw myself speaking to crowds and people being moved by what I said. The same voice repeated, speaker, that was your mission and you failed. I was shocked because when I was little, I had speech issues. I stuttered, spoke slowly, and had difficulty expressing myself. The voice said, those were attacks because it was with your voice that you were meant to fulfill your mission. But you chose to use it for other things, like rapping, deceiving people, and misleading girls, and now you've fallen. I was standing before a large door waiting, but I didn't go through it. And finally, I found myself in hell. When I say hell, it's not a metaphor, it's something real. The word pain cannot describe what I felt. I was screaming, Jesus, but I couldn't feel the presence of God. I was screaming forgiveness, forgiveness, but it was useless. It felt like time stood still, an eternity of suffering. Time did not pass. You couldn't count the seconds. A second seemed like a hundred years there was no time. I was there, suffering, screaming. I felt strange waves. I didn't understand what was happening. It was indescribable pain. I saw my mother praying for me at night, crying. Every tear that fell from her face felt like a punishment to me. It was too much, very painful. The word pain is not enough to describe it. Before I tried to make my name, influence people, and now I was paying for every person I negatively influenced. Every person who tried to imitate me, every person who listened to my music, I was punished for them. The suffering was so intense that I couldn't bear it. It felt like my soul was at its limit. Hell was not made for humans. It was created for those who conspired against God, Lucifer and the demons, the fallen angels. It's not for us. We can't bear it. After all that, I felt I was returning to my body, to the apartment where I initially was. My friends had laid me down on the bed. They were around me, some in panic, others crying, unsure whether to call an ambulance. When I came back, my friends told me that my heart had almost stopped beating. It was beating slowly, then fast. They asked, what's happening? Are you having a heart attack? But in fact, I was angry. I started yelling at them, saying it wasn't a heart attack, but a soul stoppage. I said, we're here doing our things and don't realize what awaits us. The wages of sin is death, but spiritual death is worse than physical. I would go back and forth, leaving my body, going to hell, coming back to the body over and over. It was torture. I said, I'm going to die in front of you, but I'll tell you what hell is like. I'll be the lesson for all of you. I was screaming, saying that no one should go there. Suddenly, my tongue started to burn, as if a light was coming out of my mouth, but it wasn't me speaking. My friends said I was preaching, quoting Bible verses, speaking of tribulations, something I had never done before. I just wanted to say, avoid hell. All this came out of my mouth and I couldn't control anything. As I said, in hell there is no time, so when I came back it felt like I had been gone for centuries. I felt extremely old, as if I had lived 200 years. But maybe it was just a few seconds. I don't know. Every time I came back, I felt even older. During one of these trips, I felt a huge weight, something that can't be carried. It was a weight that pulled me from the inside, and I kept descending. I screamed to my friends, Hold me! It's too heavy! In that state, I was aware of everything and said, I'm carrying the weight of your sins. I'm going down because I'm carrying the weight of your sins. It's too heavy. They tried to hold me, but they were holding my body, not my soul. My soul continued to descend, and I screamed, Wait, I'm carrying the weight of your sins here, all of you who are around me. And then I thought, Jesus bore the weight of the sins of the whole earth, yours, mine, everyone's. When I say you, the weight was something that pulled my soul from the inside out. I screamed, Hold me, it's too heavy. They tried, but I still descended. When I went down for the last time, I saw my friend making mistakes, and I started to think, this is my friend, not me. Why should I suffer for my friend? The answer was that, if you walk with him, either you help him stop doing these things or you stop walking with him. I kept suffering. The pain was unbearable, the utmost unbearable. It was too much. I knew everything, felt an implosion inside me, an explosion, weird vibrations. It was all too much. It was the worst pain of all. The pain of a man of God ending up in hell, that was the worst of all. 
After that phase, I found myself on the ground, on a surface that seemed white, but not entirely. It was a material that seemed clean and luxurious, something I had never seen before. I got up and saw in front of me something like guards, but very tall, so tall that I could barely see their faces. In the corner, there was a huge presence, a bright light. When I felt that presence, I lay down on the ground, face down as a reflex. I had never felt anything like that in my life. I used to feel invincible when I fought, but I never felt so weak. The presence made me feel like an insect, a grain of dust. A mere breath from that presence could destroy planets. It was too much power and I was completely vulnerable, dizzy with fear, rooted by the purity and power of that presence. I couldn't move, nor lift my head. I knew that if I did, I would be completely destroyed by that power. I couldn't look up. I just cried and begged for forgiveness, saying I didn't want to die, that I couldn't go to hell. I was so desperate that I expressed myself in slang and in an informal manner. Then that powerful presence of God asked me, Do you know who you are speaking to? It wasn't a nervous voice, but an authoritative one. When I heard that, I began to burn inside to scream and to beg for forgiveness. I promised to speak properly, using the language God gave to men with intelligence. I asked for forgiveness and began to speak clearly and respectfully, as if I were in front of a president or a king. Suddenly I started talking to myself, but it wasn't my voice. It was a deep voice. My soul was elsewhere, but my body was in the apartment. My friends heard what I was saying, including that deep voice. I was promising to dedicate my life to God, to testify, to win souls, to serve God. At that moment, I realized the promise was serious. Either I clung to this promise, or I would die. I was in great trouble, and that deep voice repeated, I promise. My friends were amazed, but they heard everything. After I promised to serve God, the pain stopped, but I was still lying down, motionless, with my face on the ground. Then I heard the command, rise. I couldn't get up, as the presence was so powerful I felt incapable. I remained lying until someone helped me up. I was on my knees, one knee on the ground, head down, without the courage to look up. I looked around, but not forward. I saw many men around me, but I couldn't lift my head because that power was overwhelming. While I was kneeling, I felt the powerful presence of God and knew I couldn't bear to look directly. It was a feeling of vulnerability and deep fear, but also of reverence and respect for the immensity of that power. I was aware of everything happening around me. When I looked at those men, I realized they were men of God, prophets, evangelists, and pastors. They were in the same position as I was, with one knee on the ground and their heads bowed. They wore a kind of cloak or mantle like a fur over their shoulders. In their right hand, they held a shield, and in their left hand, a sword. I looked around and saw that I was also dressed the same way, with the fur over my shoulders, a shield in my right hand, and a sword in my left hand. Then, they placed a small luxurious chest in front of me, something I had never seen before. Someone said, this is your mission. When the person put the chest on the ground, I looked at their hands and saw a hole in each of them, surrounded by red marks. That's when I realized that only someone with pierced hands like that could be Jesus. Still with my head bowed, I heard that powerful voice say, this is your last chance. I knew I had received warnings from God before, but I had never taken them seriously. I was a troubled young man, often putting my own life at risk. Those who knew me knew I had escaped death more than 10 times. Now, that voice was telling me I was forgiven, but this was my last chance. I knew I couldn't ignore it. Then, I began to feel my spirit returning to my body. As I was coming back, I heard many things at once, many voices and sounds passing through my mind. I heard the voice from the beginning mocking me, saying I was dead that I didn't deserve forgiveness because I knew too much. It was a confusion of voices saying I didn't deserve to be forgiven. When I finally returned to my body, I was sweating and my heart was beating fast. I saw my friends around me, some crying, others stressed. They had laid me down on the bed. When I came to, all I could repeat was, what grace, what grace. I kept saying that over and over. I told my friends that I realized the seriousness of what had happened. They were touched, 
but I knew I needed to impact more people. I said I needed to leave there and evangelize the world. I said that no one should go through hell, not even the worst enemy. I had this fire inside me and said my life would change from that day. I told them that my mission now was to win souls and testify and that I could not continue living as before. I was a rapper and that name had followed me. They told me to forget that name, to put aside that character I was, because he no longer existed. Then I told my friends that character no longer existed, that now I was a man of God. Now I am incredibly thankful to God for granting me the grace to experience this. Although it was very difficult, he allowed me to see what awaited me if I continued living the life I had before. If I had died living that way, I would have seen what awaited me afterward. I realized that all of this is truly ephemeral. I was chasing after money, but I realized that I couldn't take it with me after death. The money would stay here, just like the women and all the pleasures of this world that I pursued. I realized that these pleasures were ephemeral and would only lead me to ruin. I thank God for granting me this grace and for being here to testify. I want to talk to you who are listening. It's very important that we understand that this is real. I didn't really believe in these stories. I heard them from a distance, thought they were just talk. But God confronted me because it happened to me. I can no longer deny that the spiritual world exists, that life after death exists, that hell exists, and that heaven also exists. While we are alive, we have the chance to prepare our own destination. So, never feel too dirty to return to God. It's never too late. God is a God of love. He has already paid on the cross for your sins and mine. It's never too late to return to Him and repent. I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, you know my heart. You know my life. You know my situation. Lord, help me to achieve the goal to get to where you are waiting for me to enter into my destiny. Help me, Lord, not to get lost and not to fail, not to end up in hell. Help me, Lord, to fulfill what you expect of me so that I may make you proud and exude a good fragrance. I pray in your name. Amen. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the testimony we brought today. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, click the subscribe button and join our community. Don't forget to comment, like, and click the notification bell. Your presence and participation here are very important to us. May God's presence be constant in your life, bringing blessings, joy, and love. God bless you.